Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Welcome back to HP Discover, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante, and this is theCUBE. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. This is day two at HP Discover. Kirti Melkate is here. He's the founder and CTO of Aruba Networks, and also Dominic Wilde is the VP of Product Management, a CUBE alum. Good to see right. you both. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks. Thanks. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. you. Must be thrilled. Absolutely, um, absolutely. It's we heard your colleague Dom yesterday stole the show of the keynotes, you must have been very pleased with that. He came in the cube, was, he was very great. engaging. He was great. Fantastic, was great. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, the real absolutely. energy, and I think it's timely given this whole transformation of HP, yeah. you know, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. How do you feel? It's fantastic, I mean, just being here at Discover, looking at the number of attendees, just fantastic. We never could have done that at Aruba as a standalone company. At, at its height, I think we had 2,000 attendees in the audience, which is pretty good for us, and Seeing 15,000 attendees take the show in and get the word out about Aruba is just a great feeling. So, Dom, you've always been, I mean, not uh, frequently been to HP Discovers. We've had you on the yep. Cube before as, as Aruba. How's it feel to be HP now? Yeah, no, it's, um, I, I mean, so, you know, when we when we looked at uh, acquiring Aruba and we, uh, we looked at you know the reasoning behind it and everything. I mean, the opportunity in wireless is just huge. The growth in that that space is, is enormous. Um, one of the fastest growing segments in networking. So we needed to take a long, hard look at what we were doing at HP in the segment. And, and while you know we did well, we had good, you know, decent uh, solutions. What Aruba really brings to the table is a true mobility first solution going above and beyond just the connectivity capabilities, but also providing significant value add in terms of you know, the mobile capability and the mobile needs of end users. So it's actually very complementary to what we've been doing at HP in the data center space, where you know in data center people are moving to cloud and they're doing that because they're trying to create agile application environments. Um, and any investment that you make there is not fully realized if you don't have that last mile delivery and you don't meet the expectations of the end users in terms of their experience of, of those applications. And so you need a truly mobile experience. And this is what Aruba brings to the table, which is why it's such a great compliment to us. So Kirti, as an entrepreneur, you, you want to win. I mean, yeah. that's all, yeah, you're that's in the game to win, absolutely. right? Yeah. So talk about how you win you know, with HP, the decision to sure. obviously sell sure. the company. I mean, obviously it was a bigger decision than just yours, but what, what was the, the thinking, what was the vision in terms of that winning strategy? Yeah, I mean, if you look at why Aruba got started in the first place, we made the observation a decade ago that the world, if it could go wireless, would go wireless and stay mobile. And the observation was based on a simple fact that on our personal lives, we were all getting used to cell phones, but at work, we were all sitting at our desks computing, and the more natural way to compute and communicate was being mobile. And uh, unfortunately at the time, the only device that would connect over a Wi-Fi network was a laptop. And it was not until the iPhone and the iPad got introduced to the market that true mobility started to take shape. And uh, where we are today in the market, the need for connecting, sitting at a desk and connecting to a network is not needed anymore. You can be anywhere, anytime and stay connected over a Wi-Fi network. And that is fundamentally disruptive to Cisco. Right? Cisco's business is built on a wired foundation with wireless as a little a flavoring added on top of it, right? And we, we take a different approach. We basically say mobility first, which means you really don't need all the phones, the, the phones on the desk, the computers. What you have is already on your person. Just walk around with it and stay connected. And, and that disrupts a significant revenue stream that Cisco has. And it's something Cisco simply can't embrace at a business level. And that's where we started to uh, you might have read a book called The Innovator's Dilemma, oh, sure. which is really the, the essence of the strategy behind Aruba. Uh, it is disruptive, we are going to go there, and uh, what we needed was the scale. Uh, we, we have about 15% market share as a standalone company, but to really win, we needed to be much higher than that, and at this stage of our company, we needed some a partner who we could scale to the large, very large enterprises with, and also to the very small enterprises where you need the channels to be able to go to market with. And HP has both. And uh, they had the, the thirst to actually come seek us out and partner with us. And we, we, we were already OEM partners and it was already working. 
and this was a natural next move for us to come closer with HP. So Dominic, I want to get HP's perspective on this. I mean, the acquisition of 3Com got you into the networking business in a big yeah. way, but the positioning generally, I mean, I'm simplifying, was it, hey, we're an alternative to yeah. Cisco. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. And we have advantages and you know, we could be a second provider or a lower cost provider. Great, good, everybody yeah. needs you know, a number two. Yeah. I, I, and I said off camera, I see Aruba's a totally different strategy, it's a judo move. Yeah against you know, sort of Cisco's wired first strategy. Yeah. What you were saying was the cherry on top for wireless. So I wonder if you could yeah. talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I agree with you. I mean, when we acquired 3Com, um, we got to broaden the portfolio and get depth in the portfolio so as we could be a strong you know, challenger. Get in the game, right? Yeah, yeah. it's get in the game and be a strong challenger. The strategy that we executed with that portfolio was one of being the open alternative to Cisco. So Cisco being very proprietary, driving lock-in, um, what we did with the HP portfolio was drive an open agenda. And this is why we're such propon proponents of SDN. So it was a little more than just being the alternative, but you know, we've driven that strategy now for five years. It's actually been five years since the, since the 3Com acquisition. Um, but you're absolutely right, and I like the term judo move here for, for the Aruba acquisition. Um, what I think we learned on the way is that to really, really beat Cisco, you've got to get some focus you got to get into uh, you got to get into a portion of the market where there is an inflection, and you got to get in with an offering that is significantly differentiated and is viewed as having tremendous value by the customer base. And it's all of those pieces that Aruba really fit. Um, and so, you know, this is an opportunity for us to throw Cisco to the map. Um, it is an opportunity for us to, you know, to provide the, you know, the Aruba product portfolio with a much broader channel uh, and a much broader opportunity globally. Um, I mean, they've done, you know, tremendous work growing the, the company to, to the size of the business they have, and the, and the, the, you know, the velocity of that growth has been amazing. But you know, we're just going to accelerate that and then enhance our, you know, our, our open approach um, with the, the capabilities of Aruba. And we talk about this, you know, we live in a data-driven world and decisions are made with, with data, but when you guys started the company, like I said, there were no iPhones, right. there were no smartphones, but I think it was the Intel, so was it the Centrino, Centrino was the right, catalyst. That's right, that's right. Okay, I remember the Centrino, I'm like, eh, meh. <laughs> okay. It was a big guys, move for Wi-Fi. your lives, <laughs> or your professional lives that's on right. this, right? But somehow in your gut, you saw the potential coming. This is, the Generation Mobile has been a huge tailwind yeah. for you. We're, yeah. Where do you see it going? It doesn't feel like it's going to stop here. No, I think I think Gen Mobile to me is uh, is here and now. Uh, it's happening with uh, everybody connecting over the Wi-Fi network. Where it's headed, though, it's not just about people connecting. IoT. It's IoT, yeah. right? Yeah. Everything around you is going to be on the network, and guess what? It's all going to be on Wi-Fi, and uh, Wi-Fi or Zigbee or some form of wireless communication. It's not going to be on the wired side, and as it comes into the enterprise, we see traffic increasing on the wireless side dramatically over the wired network, and that's again, is if you're a CIO looking at your enterprise network and going, here's my investment, I'm putting a ton of money at people's desks, whereas all the action is away from the desk, so why don't I ship my investments to where the action is? Mm -hmm. And with IoT, the, the business cases are pretty significant, right? It's not just about people connecting. One of the big things we can bring with Wi-Fi is the idea of location enablement. Uh, figuring out where a person or a thing is, and based on that, you can do very interesting things like asset management, asset movement and tracking, people movement and tracking. Uh, and in, if, you're a, if you're a retailer, you can actually use that to engage with your customers when they come on site to your retail stores and so on. So I think networks in general with mobility are moving away from just being a, a passive conduit to the internet to being an active participant in the business aspect itself, enhancing the revenue of the, of the business that you're in. It's interesting, John Furrier, my co-host, he, he had to leave, his daughter's graduating from, from Palo Alto High School today, so uh -huh. he had a split. But um, we were talking about and sort of debating the idea economy. I, I really liked it. He thought it was a little bit of, you know, sort of fuzzy. But the interesting thing to me, another book you may have read, The Second Machine Age, uh, Eric Vinyolson and Andy McAfee, and the whole concept of the book is you, you basically take these ideas and you combine other technologies to look at, you guys have been using Uber as an example, but Waze is another good example, yeah. you know, social yeah. media and mm -hmm. you know, GPS and so forth, and then you enable this in this ID economy, the digitization of businesses. HP right. is playing a huge role in that, I would think, in, in this IOT, yeah. I think of sea of sensors, 
What's the, the HP angle here? Can you talk about that a little bit, Dominic, and add some color to that? Yeah, so you know, one of the challenges of IoT is, is, is the volume of data that it generates, and it's, it's, it's what do you do with that data, and how do you make it you know, meaningful and, and useful? Um, and so obviously, you know, the big data strategies that we have, you know, the cloud enablement that we have to be able to, um, you know, to be able to sort of access that data through the cloud and take action on it and be able to sort of sort through the data um, are all very relevant to the, you know, to the bigger HP. Um, the role that, you know, HP networking obviously takes is, is actually sort of, you know, getting down to how do you um, deploy sensors, how do you get that sort of, you know, first mile connectivity to sensors. And I think a great example of this that, you know, Kirti, I think you can t talk to is um, what Aruba has done at Levi Stadium for the, the 49ers Stadium. I mean, it's, it's just a tremendous story in terms of how you've built incredible business value on, on a sort of simple stadium Wi-Fi enablement. I don't know if you Well, this it. is a great example because yeah. you know, the Dallas Cowboys say, let's big, build the biggest giantest screen we can, yeah. which we all know is going to be outdated in yeah. a few years. What, yeah. what did Levi so, Stadium so do? So Levi's had an interesting angle. They wanted to provide Wi-Fi that worked. That was step one, right? And getting Wi-Fi to work in a high density environment like that is non-trivial to do. So we were able to accomplish that. There's some very innovative designers in our company that were able to go in there and figure out how do you fit 80,000 people watching and enjoying a game in that bowl and make it work. Um, so, so that was done, but what, what they wanted to do was to extend the network to truly engage the fan base. One very common problem if you've been to a game is you want to order food or a beer. You have to go out of your seat, <laughs> miss the game, stand in line to order, and then stand in line, wait in line again to pick up. And there, there goes 15 minutes, maybe a quarter is You gone, guarantee right? your team's going to score when you do that. Yeah. So if you're behind exactly. by a touchdown, go get a beer. Exactly. <laughs> so they wanted to simplify that. And how do you do that? Basically, you open your phone, uh, open the Levi's app, and order whatever you want. And you, you have the option of being ha having the food delivered to you in your seat or having it picked up at the closest stall to you. Now, how do you figure out where you are <laughs> or what the closest stall to where you're sitting is? And that's where location technology comes in, right? We, Aruba has SDKs where they, in, they actually integrated that into the app. So now we can signal to the app that says this person is here. So bring their food order to the closest location to where they're sitting. Not only that, tell them how to get to their food order so they don't have to wait in line and just pick it up and save a ton of time. Right? So that's one very good example where they were able to generate over a million dollars in the first season through food orders from that app. There's incremental revenue that they probably would not have had. Now, now the other thing they told us when we interviewed the folks at, at, at Levi Stadium from the Giants, uh, sorry, the, uh, the 49ers, they were saying that they also want to drive video yes. yeah. to the yeah. seat. So Which that is that the most frustrating thing as yeah. a fan. You, I love to go to games, but, but you, you know, a close play, play. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely. don't show it. Yeah, and the biggest, right. Come on, show the play. Plus, you may be sitting <laughs> in the wrong camera angle. Yeah, that's yeah. right. right? So, so what they're doing is they capture the game from multiple camera angles, and they stream all of that over the air. So you can select on your phone or your tablet which camera angle do you want to be on and watch the replays. It's like sitting on your couch and enjoying the game. That is awesome. That's going to change the, the fan viewing experience in the NFL, which is obviously one of the greatest sports in this country. How did you, at a high level, make Wi-Fi work? What were the challenges you faced in making Wi-Fi work in a stadium like that? We we can all relate. I mean, we're here. It's yeah. very difficult yeah, to get out. Yeah, if you're into stadiums, yeah. even cell phones don't work. Right. Right? I mean, you right. can't even get a text message. By out. the way, this is, this is all Aruba Wi-Fi. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually, we have a, a local Wi-Fi yeah. here. We don't need to use it. Right. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah, Cube, we have the Cube Wi-Fi. We don't need to use it. You know? yeah. Simply put, here's the challenge. Basically, you have to figure out how to trick physics. Right. I mean, what happens is you're sitting around. Uh, radio communications all happen on the same spectrum, right? And when we are on Wi-Fi, we are all sharing the same channel, same same amount of bandwidth. And the trick is, how do you reuse the bandwidth? Because if you have 80,000 people on a single channel with one access point, you can't get a single packet out. And so that text message will never get out, right? But what people want to be able to do is tweet their photographs or a play that just happened to their real friends. time, no, yeah. real time. And so that, that requires a lot more bandwidth. So what, what we do is basically create these very small cells where you're sharing uh, bandwidth with roughly 50 people around you. And to do that, you need to have access points that pick up the traffic 
around the 50 people where you, you're sitting, and then the next 50 pick up the next access point and so on. So the trick is in designing a system that allows you to do that efficiently. In, in technology we call it, it's called reuse, where you're reusing the channel uh, over and over and over again and getting the multiplier effect. The very interesting thing that we found was the effect was people are attenuators of the signal. So the idea is the signal should not propagate and it should actually be contained. And so the, the access points are located underneath the seats. And so when you're sitting there enjoying the game, people act as at natural attenuators and the cell sizes shrink. It's funny, when the people are there, there's more capacity in the network when, than when so the So you localized aren't there. the cell capacities, rethought the architecture of how you would approach this problem, mm -hmm. thought, thought about it differently, and then solved it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you go in there and figure out what it is. And interestingly, density actually increases capacity because the people are part of the solution. Right, right. More people, yeah. more capacity. More cells, as more opposed capacity. to brute forcing it. As opposed to brute right. forcing it with antennas, very fancy antennas, mm -hmm. very. Uh, complicated algorithms which which make it more expensive and more difficult to work with. This was a feat of really both uh, engineering on the software side and engineering on the implementation side to get it all together. Now have you been able to, I presume you're commercializing that in other use cases, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, here's one. Um, what, what about the business case, hmm. Dominic? I mean, w when you talk to, well, who, first of all, who do you talk to and how are you making the business case? For the customer base is, um, I mean, it's, it's really, so a lot of the business case is generated from sort of sea level downwards, as, you, as it were, there's, there's a couple of different ways this can come in. You know, sea level executives wanting to add additional value um, to, to the line of business. So wanting to be able to be revenue generating, generate new and innovative services in a business. Um, and, and, you know, mobility is, is, is an easy sort of, you know, it's easy to imagine many different ways you can do that in different verticals. Um, the other, the other way it comes in is is from the user base. Um, you know, if you take the education environment, for example, as an interesting challenge, there is the user base is you know you would think in a university, for instance, would be in the classroom, in the lecture hall, you know, doing work. But a big challenge is what happens in the dorm rooms at night, where suddenly all the wireless traffic explodes because everybody's streaming their Netflix. And those, those users in the dorm have an expectation that they will get the same level of service level and, and, and attention as they get when they're in the classroom. They expect to be able to work anytime, any place. And, so, um, and so a lot of times the, you know, the demand is driven from the user base. Um, and then it's very easy then to make a business case to a customer to go in and say, look, rather than just providing raw connectivity and raw bandwidth, what you want to do is you want to be able to provide a service and a service level that your end user, end user will appreciate and potentially pay for. So can you get those students in the dorm room to actually pay now for the, the explosion of bandwidth that they're using um, while the university funds what is used in the, in the campus? Um, there's examples like that. You can now differentiate the types of things that people are doing and where they're doing it. And so, you know, we can now start to tie identity into the network. We can start to tie that identity to the application usage. And it's very easy to then build very specific business cases around, you know, different use cases. Mm. So, so sort of finishing up here, let's talk about the, the new portfolio. How does Aruba sort of change the portfolio of HP? Maybe talk about where it fits. So how do you describe the portfolio? With kind of, dramatically enhances the portfolio. Yeah. So you used to come in with, you know, you, what you said before was you, you've got alternatives, you're more open, boom. Yeah. What's, what's the elevator pitch now and specifically describe the portfolio yeah. to a customer? So I think, the, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, Dominic Orr and, and Kier to use a wonderful term, which is the mobile first network. Um, and I think that is the new paradigm in networking. It, it is having a network that is designed mobile first. So rather than thinking of it the other way around, which is, you know, I have a wired infrastructure and I've got a bolt on wireless, think the other way around. So that's really the elevator pitch is, you know, think mobile mm -hmm. first and design from, you know, from therein. Um, the portfolio is, um, you know, again, we have very compre comprehensive portfolio, um, but, you know, the Aruba stuff is, is, a, is a very complimentary add-on. 
um, we're being we're now able to to take things like the clear pass policy management that Aruba has that allows you to describe very simple business policy um, and translate that into into the infrastructure we're able to bring our switching infrastructure underneath that uh, and so we're, we're going to go through the process of bringing all these things together, taking the best of what we've had at HP from the wired side with the best of the, of the mobility capabilities from Aruba and bringing that all together. And it is a very, very comprehensive and coherent end-to-end -end value proposition because as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't just stop in the campus and the mobile environment, it goes all the way back to the value proposition of why you're deploying cloud and why you're actually doing cloud native applications to deliver them in a mobile environment. So it, it, it's, a, it's a really you know, comprehensive end-to-end -end solution. So I said earlier, yesterday, I said I thought that, that Aruba could be HP networking's three par. Yeah. Um, and and I, th I still believe that in terms of the potential and I think it could exceed that. But initially three par was kind of left alone, mm -hmm. kind of do its own thing. And now after several years, it's starting to you know, integrate much more yeah. fully. It sounds like it's not a leave alone strategy for Aruba. Oh, it's much it's more active than that. I mean, <laughs> we're going to keep the brand alive. I mean, the brand yeah, is a right. significant uh, um, adder to the whole value proposition. People believe in, in the Aruba brand, and so I, I think that is going to remain, just like 3PAR has continued to exist. But I think the integration will be far closer, far faster in terms of the product portfolios, right? Because we go in there today as Aruba and say, here is the mobility overlay on top of your, of your fixed network, right? And we didn't care whose fixed network it was. Mm -hmm. Now we do, we can actually go in there and say, here is the end-to-end -end solution, right? Right. based on open principles. So you still have choice, you don't have to lock yourself in, but it's the best of breed open solution out there in the market. Excellent, okay, we have to leave it there. The, the collision of cloud, networking, enterprise, mobility, gentlemen, congratulations, great acquisition. Congratulations on taking the next step with, with your company, Kirti, and really pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you very much. All right, keep Thanks. right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from HP Discover. Be right back.